Hey guys, welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. If you're new here, my name is Pompberry, and I'm posting one video a day during the month of October. That means 31 brand new tutorials for you guys. So I hope you'll stick around to watch all of them. If you want to get updated every time I upload, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. Stick around for all 31 tutorials. Why not? And maybe more, because I'll keep posting after this. I mean, I don't know, it's just an idea. Today I'm going to be doing a death's head moth skull. I don't know how I came up with this. I just thought it might be a cool idea. And it's kind of got like x-ray vibes a little bit. At least that's what I'm getting. But I don't know. I hope you guys like it. So yeah, if you want to see how I did this, then just keep on watching. So I've already started off by covering up my eyebrows. If you want to learn how to do this, I'm going to link a tutorial up here and down below. I'm going to start off with a wolf skins palette. So I can start mapping out the moth. And before you make any moth jokes, I am kicking myself over not having made a single one during this video. But to be fair, I filmed this before moth memes were a thing. And I love moth memes, so I kind of hate myself for not including a single tiny little joke in this video. Then I'm going in with a wolf black face paint, and I'm just going to apply that all over on the outside of the outlines of the moth. And be careful not to eat it. Just don't do that. It's not good for you. Be sure to stick it up your nose, as professional makeup artists do. Once that layer's done, it's time for layer number two. Because you can see it's not quite there yet with the opacity. We want it to be super duper super black. Then going in with a Mehron Clown White Light, I'm going to start drawing in the skull. And for some reason I started with the teeth. I don't know, that just seemed easier. I usually start with the eyes, but the eyes are a moth right now. So I'm using this product on a small flat brush and it makes drawing the teeth really easy because the brush is kind of already in the shape of the teeth. So all I need to do really is place the brush down and drag it in a single line and that's the tooth basically done. So just repeat that all over. And then I'm also drawing the cheekbones and the jaw bones but you'll see that I'm concentrating the white on the highest points of the bones. I'm not going to be filling in the entire skull like most skulls. I'm just filling in the highlights. Then moving on to the temples and doing the same thing, I'm just applying the white to the highest points of the bones and my little chin as well. And this is a product that allows layering, so feel free to apply and blend out and then apply some more and build up that intensity little by little. Once I've got the whole skull mapped out, I'm just kind of refining the shapes and adding some more teeth for good measure. These are the teeth that are in the back, so they're a little bit more hidden. You can see I'm drawing them at an angle, and this really helps to add dimension to the skull. It kind of gives a sense of perspective to the look. And as I said before with the layering, I'm just doing that and building up that white slowly. And the reason I like to layer is so that I can build up texture. So I don't just want flat washes of color. For a look to be more interesting, you need texture and lots of it. Once I'm happy enough with the cream white, oh, she's, she's dancing, oh, uh, all right. Busting out some moves, apparently. Once I'm happy with the cream white, I'm gonna go in with a wolf white face paint, and I'm just applying the face paint to the very highest points of the face. So mainly along the edges of the cheekbones and the teeth that are at the front, not the back teeth. And I'm applying that with a brush and then blending it out a little bit with the brush I used beforehand. I'm also applying it to the edges of the nose to define that a little bit. And applying it to every edge, really. You can see how this really, really helps to define the volumes and adds a lot of dimension. Now going in with the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette, and I'm using the color Void. It's a matte black, and I'm going to use that to shade the back teeth. I want to make them look like they're just barely showing up, and they're kind of just disappearing into the darkness. Then going back in with the Clown White Light, I'm kind of highlighting the area below the bottom teeth and on my jawline. Just adding some more points of light here and there. It's all about adding texture, adding light, adding volume. And for all of this, I'm just using a little flat brush and just patting the product down. That way you'll get tons of texture from it. You all know the tabby texture if you've been here long enough. And then doing the same thing on my forehead slash temple area. I'm just adding a little bit more light to that area. I'm also highlighting around the wings of the moth just to bring them out a little bit. 
and highlighting the center of the forehead because that is a dome shaped bone so we want to make sure that that has volume too. Okay, I think that's the skull pretty much done, at least for now. Now moving on to the moth. And I wish I had a lamp for my moth. Will you be my lamp? I'm going in with the Mehron Paradise Paint in the color Mango, and I'm just applying that all over the bottom wings as my base color. And once it's dry, I'm going in with a second coat. Then I'm using this dark brown from the Skins palette and applying that on the top wings. You can do a little dance while you wait for it to dry. I'm just drawing the little sections of the wings, leaving a little tiny line in between each one. And no, I don't know what these sections are called. Butterflies have them too. I'm sure they have a name. No, I can't be bothered looking that up right now because it's almost midnight and I'm really, really tired. But hey, do I have any zoologists or biology buffs in my subscribers? Let me know what these are called. Then I'm going in with the darkest brown on an even tinier brush, and now I'm drawing in between those little sections that I just created. And first I'm drawing this thick line to kind of serve as my guiding point for all the other little lines. And I'm just following a reference image here. I'm just basically drawing tiny, tiny little sections on the outer portion of the wing. Then back in with the color mango, and I'm drawing little stripes on its little body almost like a little bee. Then going in with black and separating the abdomen. Is that the moth's abdomen? I don't know. I don't know. Then I'm taking the yellow and just dotting it on the top wings. And I'm not dotting this on randomly, I'm following the reference image. So I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. There's kind of a design to these little dots, or rather they're more concentrated in certain areas of the wing, but I just want as much texture as possible, so I'm just dotting this on, making little teeny tiny dots. Then I'm going in with the Black Moon Cosmetics Orb of Light palette, and I'm using the darkest brown from this to set my eyelids, and going over it with the black to darken that a little bit more. And I've set my eyelids really well so that I can do those patterns on the eyelids as well. And as you can see, they're almost like little stars, they're just teeny tiny dots. And make sure that paint dries before you decide to open your eyes. Once I've got the base of those dots down, I'm kind of intensifying it closer to the outer portion of the wing. Then I'm going in with this warm tan color from the Skins palette, and I'm just adding some more little details to the top wing, kind of beside where I did all the yellow ones. Then I'm going in with the black face paint and just going kind of around those two previous colors. So I'm just dotting it next to the other ones to kind of make them stand out a bit more against the brown. You can see this creates a higher contrast between the colors, so it helps to make all the lighter details stand out a little bit more. See the difference that makes? Just adds a ton of dimension. Now I'm filling in the rest of its little body, or the part with the skull on it anyways. You just wanna kinda create a ring of black around, and leave the center clear of product because that's where the skull is gonna be. Then I'm drawing the little head and filling in the black around it, but making sure to leave a tiny, tiny little outline so you can still see the head a little bit. Then going in with that lightest color from the Skins palette and filling in the little skull on its body. And this isn't actually a skull, it just looks like it, but I'm following what the moth actually has on its back. So it isn't quite a skull, but kind of. So I just filled in the parts that look like eye sockets with the black, then using the black to shade in the rest of the little body and fill in all those stripy gaps. Then back in to do some more detailing on the little skull thing on its body. Then going back in with some white face paint on the end of its little tail. I know it's not a tail, but it's a little bum bum. Okay, now I gotta zoom you in real close for this. I am dotting these teeny tiny little dots all along the middle of the body. I told you, this look is all about the texture. You want as many tiny little dots as you can. I'm also doing tiny little dots on the head so it adds some definition to it, and then drawing the little antenna. And we all know moths are fluffy little creatures, so I'm going in and drawing the little 
hairs on its body. I'm just basically drawing tiny, tiny little strokes along all the yellow stripes. And once I've got the body pretty much done, I'm refining the outline with the black. Then I'm outlining the moth with the white to really make it stand out. And I'm doing basically a consistent line around the top wing, but around the bottom one, I'm just kind of dotting that white on. So it kind of blends in with the texture of the bone underneath. Then I took the black and outlined right beside the white line that I just created and this just helps bring it out a little bit more. Then I added some more highlights here and there to make them really really stand out as you can see and highlighted the teeth even further. And you can see that adding these points of light really changed the look as a whole. So I'm just intensifying all those highlights but I'm not making the skull look lighter, I'm just making these areas more intense. Then I'm going in with the Clown White Light and I'm highlighting the edges of my temples and adding some more tappy texture onto the forehead area. I just felt like some areas were too dark and the bones weren't really standing out all that much so I just added a bit of this to the jaw area. Then I'm lining my waterline with a Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in whatever black. It's just a black pencil. And I am setting everything with the RCMA No Color Powder and I'm using a very, very fluffy brush and a really light touch to make sure that I don't move anything in the process. Then I'm going in with the Sugar Pill Eyeshadow Bulletproof, which is a very intense matte black. I know this is like the third black shadow I've used in this look. I don't know what I'm doing, you guys. And I'm just using that to set the bigger black areas of the face. And then I put on a wig and a flower crown and that's the look done. It looks super creepy. It reminds me of like a necromancer from Diablo or something. You know what I'm talking about? Like a skull with long hair. It just reminds me of Blizzard games, Diablo or World of Warcraft. The Lich King, that's who it reminds me of. The Lich King. Even though he's not a skull and he doesn't have moths, it's still, you, you know what I'm talking about. And now I'm really bummed looking at this footage and seeing that I didn't hold up a lamp to my face. Here, I'll, I'll add it in real quick. But yeah, this look was kind of experimental for me. I didn't really know what I was going for. I just knew that I wanted to do the moth and a sort of grayish skull that ended up looking a bit like an x-ray. And I'm super here for that. Sometimes it's just fun to play with makeup and see what happens. The materials are super straightforward, super simple, but it just goes to show that you don't need a lot of products. You just need to get creative. Hopefully this will help you get a few ideas for Halloween. And if you decide to recreate this, then please let me know. I'd love to see it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!